Hi, folks. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday afternoon um, and getting ready to learn a little bit more about University of Minnesota Law School. This is a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about before we get on with the rest of our programming. But thank you all so much for being here. So first of all, my name is Molly Wagner. I am a 2L. I'm originally from Southern Maryland and I went to undergrad in Washington, DC. Uh, I worked in the private sector for five years before coming to law school and I was completely new to Minnesota. I had never been there before, been here before, um, but you know, very happy. And I think I've adjusted to the climate well. Um, I worked, like I said, I worked in the private sector. When I came to law school, I thought I was going to do public interest, but that ended up shifting for me while I was um, at Minnesota. And I'm happy to, to talk about that further. But what I really wanted to talk about is why I chose Minnesota law. So there were a lot of reasons. Um, I was really attracted to Minnesota for two key reasons. First, I was attracted to the blend of kind of traditional lecture-based doctrinal classes and the way that that meshed with the experiential classes that Minnesota offered. So one thing that I found really interesting was that even in your 1L year, you have the opportunity to practice real lawyering skills, both through the small legal writing classes, which are taught by uh, real practitioners who are working in the Twin Cities, and they're assisted by a 2L or a 3L. And those are in small groups. So you get a lot of really individualized attention and you learn about writing memos um, and all the different types of legal writing that you'll need in your career. And then in the spring of your 1L year, you get to participate in this class called Law and Practice, which is a 100% simulation-based course where you're really taught the real nuts and bolts of lawyering. We bring in actors to act as your clients and you get to do depositions, client interviews. Um, we actually go to Hennepin County Courthouse and you meet with a real judge to do a judge's chambers conference. And it's a really great way to get exposed to the real mechanics of what it means to be a lawyer in your 1L year. And then beyond that, I was really attracted to all the different clinic opportunities at Minnesota. So currently I'm in the tax clinic and I'll be returning next year as a 3L as clinic director. And I've really enjoyed that opportunity, not only to get real world experience, but as a way to connect and serve directly with the Minnesota community. Um, and the other big thing that really attracted me to Minnesota was the community. And I think you'll hear a lot of current students say that. Um, and we're really hopeful that during this presentation and during the breakout rooms with, uh, faculty, staff, and current students that you have the opportunity to get a little taste of the Minnesota community. I found it to, I found it to be extremely cooperative. Um, all of my classmates have always been there to lend a, a helping hand in terms of if you miss class, sending notes, um, having study groups, really kind of building each other up even as exam season gets close. Um, and that's just something that I think has made my law school experience uh, so great and something I really treasure. Even in Zoom law school, I'm still very connected with all of my section mates and all of my classmates. And I'm looking forward to seeing them again in my 3L year in person. I'm happy to answer any other questions um, about my law school experience, but you'll also have the opportunity to speak with current students in breakout rooms. So let's go a little bit to what our overall agenda is. Today, we will be um, having a special topics panel focused on launching your career. So you'll have the opportunity to hear from some of our amazing career counselor and career services folks, which I cannot speak highly enough of. Um, my career counselor is Ann Sexton. I, she's been such an advocate for me and really helped me as I have um, changed my career plans and evolved around that um, during my time at law school. And she's been there with me through it all, helping me do mock interviews, looking over my resume, giving me critiques on my, um, on my cover letters and different fellowship essays that I've written. So I just, I really cannot speak highly enough of the career services panel, uh, career services team. And I'm really excited that they're here to talk to you more. 
We also will be joined by three alum, alums who recently graduated and are working in different areas. And they can tell you about how they launched their careers um, in their respective fields. And you can ask more questions through that. Um, we want it to be a little informal. So once I stop sharing my screen and the panel gets going, you can feel free to unmute and ask questions, um, or you can put questions in the chat and we can pose them to the panelists. Following our panel, we will be doing um, breakout rooms, as I mentioned, and we'll have folks from the Career Center, um, we'll have professors, and we'll also have current students. And these we're hoping can just be a little bit more informal, that you can ask any questions about the program, student life, um, Career Center support, um, and kind of just get a little bit more of a conversational answer. Uh, we'll do two rounds of breakout rooms, 20 minutes each. And then we'll all come back here for our closing Q&A. Um, we'll have a short break. And then if you so choose, you can join our live class um, observation, which is a real class of CivPro2 with Professor Erbsen. Um, the class link will be in the chat. And you can feel free to leave the class um, at class break or stay for all of it. We just ask that if you choose to join the class, you either stay for the entire thing or leave during the break. Um, we'll also request that you have your audio and video off. And then after class, uh, you can come back here for a debrief with Sarani, um, one of my, the co-head ambassador, who is also uh, a student in Professor Erbson's class, and just kind of talk about uh, how this class compares to other law school classes, um, and just get any last minute questions answered. But we will go ahead and move on to our special topics panel. So I will stop my share and you can feel free to turn on your videos. Um, it's great to see all of your faces. Thank you again so much for being here. Um, we're really excited to get to talk to you more and we really wanna be a resource for you. So please, um, feel free to pose any questions that you have in the chat and we'll be sure to either answer them during the panel or um, we can respond back in, in the chat. But before, um, before we get started, we have a few folks from admissions here. If they could just briefly introduce themselves and then we'll move into the panel. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Angley, the Director of Admissions at the Law School, and I'm so happy you all are joining us here today to learn more about the Law School, and um, hopefully I'll have the opportunity to meet you on campus in the fall. Welcome. I'll go next. Hi, I'm Kate Snowden. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions. I recognize many of your names. It's so nice to see many faces and look forward to seeing many of you. Uh, or all of you in the fall. Welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Allie Hilding, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions. So, so glad you're all here. I love seeing everyone's little yeah. videos. So thanks for being here. And I think this is going to be an awesome presentation. Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie Mersel. There's two Maddies, so keep an eye out. But yeah, I'm Maddie Mersel. I use they, them pronouns. I'm an admissions counselor, and I also really look forward to being able to meet a lot of you in person. It's great to see faces and match those faces to all these names that we've been seeing for so long. So yes, welcome, and I will pass it off to Maddie R. Hi all, I'm Maddie Rudkin, and I'm the admissions coordinator for uh, Minnesota Law. And yeah, similarly, just super excited to see faces, and we just love putting on these events. So really excited that y'all have joined us today. Hello, I'm Sarani Milliken. I'm a second year law student, just like Molly, and I uh, will be in breakout rooms as well. So like, I look forward to meeting all of you. I love, I love First Look Fridays. I get to see these faces. I get to put faces to names. I get to meet people. It's amazing. And you guys, thank you for coming. Hey, thank you so much. So um, I think we can introduce some of our alumni panelists that are here. Um, Kate Bjorklund, I believe I see you on. Uh, Kate is a 2019 alum. Uh, she had a clerkship and then uh, is now currently working at Stenson. Kate, would you like to introduce yourself? Every time. Um, my name is Kate. I use she, her pronouns. I, like you said, Molly, I graduated in 2019 
And then I went on to clerk at the Minnesota Supreme Court for Justices um, Hudson and Chudich. They have a share clerk system um, at the court. Um, and then I started at Stinson in January and I'm now a litigation associate. So sort of doing general business litigation. Great, thanks so much. Um, and we also have uh, Cindy Shi. Cindy was a 2020 alum and is currently a judicial law clerk in Reno, Nevada. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Cindy and like Molly said, I graduated in 2020, so right at the height of pandemic, but um, I think uh, it's really exciting to meet you all. I love First Fridays as well and I'm working here in the beautiful Reno, Nevada as a law clerk as Molly said. Thank you so much for being here. And we have Doug Bryson, who is a class of 2017 alum and is currently working for the US Air Force as Chief Administrative Chief of Administrative in Investigations for the 86th Airlift Wing in Ramson Air Force Base, Germany. And I hope I got your title correct. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, thank you for the introduction though. Uh, so yeah, as mentioned, uh, uh, the shorthand for what I do is I'm a JAG. So uh, I'm an Air Force officer who's also a lawyer. Uh, and I'm currently based here in, uh, in Ramstein Air Force Base. Uh, because first off, they put me in Minot. I'm pretty sure they were like, oh, this kid has hockey skates. He likes to play hockey. Let's send him to the frozen tundra. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed my time in Minnesota and looking forward to talking to you all. Great, thank you so much. Um, and I know um, the Chief of our Career Services, Claudia Mello, will be joining us shortly. Um, but uh, admitted students, you can feel free to pose any questions in the chat uh, about how folks got there, uh, how any of these alums uh, either decided on their career paths or what kind of things led them to the paths that they are currently in um, in law school. And as soon as Claudia joins, she will give us a overview of uh, all the different services that the Career Center offers. And like I said, I really cannot speak highly enough of them. Um, I have availed myself of many of the Career Center um, resources in my two years so far, from uh, mock interview prep to resume review to um, cover letter uh, review, and also um, a lot of help doing different career fairs and uh, OCI interviews. So that has been a huge part of the services that they, that they offer. But while we're, while we're waiting, um, maybe if uh, the alums just wanna give a little bit of an overview of where they thought they were starting in law school and how that compared to where they ended up. Because I know for me, even as a 2L, that has changed drastically. <laughs> Kate, what, uh, would you like to start? Sure. Um, yeah, it changed very drastically for me as well. <laughs> and that seems like a common experience once you get to law school. So um, I worked in um, the nonprofit sector for three years before I came to law school, um, primarily at aid service organizations um, or organizations doing fundraising to support um, the work of HIV and AIDS services. I wanted to do something like that when I came to law school. I wanted to do public interest work. And in a lot of ways, that's still, um, it's really important to me. It's just taken a different shape. Um, so I also knew that I wanted to clerk um, because I love mentorship relationships. I love writing um, the sort of monastic lifestyle of a clerk, even though I'm an extrovert, <laughs> um, was appealing to me. And I was fortunate enough that that, that did work out. Um, and I also availed myself of so many career uh, center services. I thought I saw Hallie on this call and Hallie really helped me through um, this whole process. Um, so part of the reason that I ended up applying to Stinson, so Stinson is sort of a general civil law firm in the Twin Cities um, and it's a regional firm. Even though I didn't think that I wanted to sort of go into big law, um, she talked with me and said, you know, it's a good thing to try. Um, it's a good thing to just interview for, see if you like it. And because I was still a little bit hesitant because I wanted to stay on, a, on the path that I'd set for myself, 
I only applied um, to three firms. And you'll maybe end up learning that a lot of the times OCI ends up being a really big apply everywhere you can sort of process. And Hallie helped me sort of narrow the types of places I might be interested in working in. And I only applied to firms that I knew had really strong pro bono practices and that I had experience um, with their pro bono practices, or I knew about um, their reputations really specifically. And I ended up picking Stinson because it was a good fit for that type of work that I wanna do. I do do a lot of pro bono work right now, um, even as a really new um, and young associate. Um, and the reason that I ended up um, deciding to return to Stinson after my year as a summer associate was I just really feel like I'm learning how to be a lawyer. And the firm is filled with a lot of um, a lot of good people that have the time and resources to teach me how to be a civil litigator. And so it ended up being a really good fit in that way. Um, and I'm glad that I sort of took an approach um, I learned in law school that I just really want to be a lawyer. <laughs> in addition to the issues that I care about, I really want to be a lawyer. And I feel like I'm, I chose a career that helped me become the best lawyer I can be. And for me personally, I think that's going to be different for everybody. But for me, these two um, jobs so far have been the best fit. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Doug, do you want to talk a little bit about where you were coming in and where you are now and how that compares? Sure. Uh, so I was literally the reverse of that, actually. I spent 10 years in business uh, before I even went to law school. Uh, so I'm to this day still earning a lot less money than before I went to law school, uh, which is usually the opposite. But um, I spent all my time in business and I came to law school not really knowing whether I wanted to do public interest, whether I wanted to do business law, what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to litigate, whether I wanted to be transactional, I didn't really know. Uh, and so I spent a lot of my time in law school kind of learning what I wanted to do, uh, much the same way. Minnesota is a great place to do that, uh, especially I know somebody mentioned, I think it was actually you, Molly, the experiential classes and things like that. That's fantastic. And I love that. And it helped me. Uh, and then I actually, during my 1L year, I applied to what's known as the Air Force's graduate law program. Uh, didn't expect to get it. There's like eight people in the work country that get selected each year. And they said, yes, we'd like to have you. And from that moment on, I then spent uh, every Thursday night and every Wednesday putting on a uniform and going to ROTC with all the 18 year olds um, and spent my 1L summer actually going to field training, which is kind of like boot camp, getting shouted at and what have you. Um, and then, yeah, so from there on, I then started working and focusing my kind of time around things I knew what I'd want to do, like Lord of War, litigation, things like that. And I actually spent a lot of time with the career office as well, because I was going down a slightly different path where I knew what I was going to do after law school. I had a commission coming up. I was going to be a JAG officer. So I needed to try and find jobs and experiences that I could draw on that weren't looking for like the summer associate program, you know, that typical traditional kind of way. Uh, and actually, Claudia, who I saw just joined the call, was somebody who helped me a lot in finding those kind of opportunities I was looking for things that weren't that kind of like sell your soul, as I'm sure some of you are all worried about. I wanted to find places and I ended up finding some great opportunities, both in the law school, uh, kind of doing research system work, and then also at Excel Energy, which is something I found through the, uh, the, the uh, career center there. They put me there and I worked for some of them, really enjoyed it before I then Ended up joining the Air Force, going to Minot, deploying down to Guantanamo, where I worked with the, uh, the military commissions and 9-11 and what have you, and the confinement center down there. And then now over here in Ramstein, Germany. Uh, so, which is why I'm sorry, still wearing this kind of stuff. Uh, I just got home about 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the call. So it's kind of dashed up here. So apologize for the very... Great, they, I think you froze a little bit. But um, thank you so much for that. I think we got most of it. Um, and the, I wanted to move to Cindy before we bring in Claudia to talk more specifically about the uh, career centers uh, and all the services that they offer. But Cindy, could you just give a little bit of an overview of where you started and where you are now? 
Uh, sure. So I came into law school not really knowing what I wanted to do, I think, as many one else do. Um, I then grew up with lawyers around me. I have no lawyers in my family, but just from attending some Minnesota law admission events, I knew that Minnesota law would help me figure it out. And I think that it really did. And I really want to sort of give credit to the school, the career center, and honestly, the people. I think they really make a difference in your law school experience. Um, and so I worked actually uh, in nonprofit my 2L year um, in New York that focused on litigation. And I actually came in thinking I didn't want to go into litigation just because I'm very conflict diverse. I didn't know what litigation looked like. From TV, it seemed like there was a lot of fighting and trials. And so that made me really nervous. Um, but that summer really showed me what litigation is. It's really connecting with your clients, trying to find how they want to resolve a case. Um, and I also sort of knew I wanted to move out of Minnesota um, coming into law school just because my family's out west and uh, my partner actually found a job in Carson City first and I was able to find a great opportunity in Reno. And I think that's also a testimony to the Career Center and the law school just because coming into Nevada, I didn't really know anyone. and uh, I didn't really know what the legal legal community looked like, but the Career Center was there. I knew that my experience and my uh, learning from the law school was going to help me succeed anywhere. And Hallie was also my career counselor. She was amazing. She, I think I went to her office like once a month, just freaking out over what I wanted to do, but she was always there for me. And um, Minnesota Law also has a career counselor for clerkships as well. So Allison helped me a lot. Uh, through the uh, resume and the cover letter. And I think, you know, they don't give up on you. Sometimes, you know, you feel like, oh man, I mean, I was applying during a pandemic. I had interviews canceled. It was a very sort of nerve wracking moment, but the career counselors and the career center, they were there for me. So uh, I'm loving clerkship. I think I might be going into litigation afterwards. Um, it's an incredible experience. And I, if that's something you're interested, I highly encourage. And I didn't think I would be doing clerking after law school, but it's it's incredible, lots of great experiences. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you all for sharing your experience. I know um, Claudia Mello has joined us, the director of the Career Center. Um, and Claudia, do you, if you'd just like to give an overview of the all of the different offerings and resources that the Career Center has for students, that would be great. Hi everyone, my apologies for being a little late this morning. Lots of tech issues on my end, but they all got resolved. Um, it's a good thing I had my camera off. My bandwidth was a little bit low and I'm glad I had my camera off because I was smiling from ear to ear. It's just such a wonderful panel and hearing all of your different experiences. Um, it's a really diverse panel in terms of the different experiences that this panel is sharing. Um, what, what I love about that is that there is a unifying theme here, which is the your law school experience really is about a tremendous amount of exploration. Um, and that first year of law school, our, the Career Center motto is explore. Um, we really work with our students where they're at. Some of you, as Doug mentioned, have come in with a great deal of experience, but it could be in a really different area and are really seeking to transition. Others are coming in saying, you know what, I'm wide open, <laughs> bring it to me, Let, let's, let's see where I'm going to go. And that's really exciting too. So wherever that student is at, we are prepared to be there and say, okay, this is going to be your process. And I really do believe that, that this is such an individual process every step of the way. And it becomes a, um, a partnership, a, a partnership between the student and that student's career counselor to really determine what the, what the next steps are. So that 1L year is all about exploring and, and we put a lot of tools in place to ensure that students are able to do that exploration. So whether it's um, big receptions, we have a couple of signature events called meet the market events where we bring attorneys to the law school and the entire purpose of the event, it's not a job fair, the entire purpose of the event is for students to introduce themselves and say, hey, what do you do? You know, what does a typical day look like for you? And that's a really fun event for both the students and the staff alike. Um, it's also, you know, have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with their career counselors, and I can't overemphasize the importance of that. Um, each student is, is paired with a career counselor that works with them from their first year all the way through even past graduation. Um, and that's, I think, is a really unique feature of the law school in that um, 
students really have the opportunity to develop really deep relationships with their career counselors. And that person becomes your cheerleader every step of the way. Um, that is not something that I had in law school. Um, and I can see now <laughs> what a tremendous benefit that would have been. Someone who really um, gets to know you and, and is able to call you out on some things and be like, no, I don't know. But like, I don't know about this. Let's let's think of this in, in another way because they get to know you so well. Or and just knows when to give you that extra push or, or, or be that cheerleader and be that source of support. Um, so on our end, we develop really strong relationships with our students. We really celebrate our students and, and really are rewarded in this process of seeing how they grow the transition from 1L year to graduation is such a transformation. It's really exciting to be a part of that. So that 1L year is about exploration. We call the 2L year our engagement year, and that's when students are really immersing themselves in the market, whether it's through clinics or illegal internships or getting involved in journal and law review and, and different experiential experiences. And then that 3L year is all about transitioning out of the law school and landing on your feet in, in your successful career path. So I will leave it there. I know we have a breakout room and there. Um, I, I, can, I can talk all day, but I will leave it there. And I think um, it is, thank you for inviting me. This has been a really, a, a lot of fun to see our panelists and hear their stories. Great, thank you so much. So folks, um, I welcome you to uh, put questions in the chat for the panel. You can also use the raise hand function if you'd like to ask a question on video, um, but we're here to just, uh, share our experiences and tell you a little bit more. And I do just want to say that my entire career, my entire law school trajectory was changed by one of those signature events of, um, it was actually a meet the bar event. And I just happened to get to talking to the bar representative of the employee benefits division, which I thought I was going to go into be a public defender. And no one was more surprised than myself that with the path I'm currently on being tax and employee benefits. I hated numbers and I, I, was, I was like, tax has numbers, that's not for me. But I love it. And, it's, um, and it really was all really sparked by a conversation that I had at a Meet, a meet the Bar event, um, which was hosted by the Career Center. So I just really, I just wanted to put that out there that sometimes you don't know what is going to end up illuminating your path. Um, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of opportunities to just, and I would encourage you to be open to all of them <laughs> over the course of law school. Um, but yeah, if folks have questions, you know, please feel free to just raise hand or unmute and, and ask. Given the resounding silence, I was wondering if I could just pop a question in. Um, so this is for all of the alumni pa uh, panelists and maybe even Claudia. What was the single most fulfilling thing you did during law school here at UMN? Uh, and that helped you kind of on your path. Uh, I've got one actually that's fairly easy for me. Uh, I was part of the housing clinic at the law school. Uh, and what was great about that is that we actually got to do a lot of client work. Uh, we actually, with the housing clinic in Minnesota, you could actually go to court. You can actually stand up. And I mean, sometimes you're up against real lawyers, other times you're up against paralegals who are kind of feeling as lawyers. Uh, but still, that uh, first kind of time that you're standing up in front of uh, a quote unquote judge. Uh, and actually getting to do that and you're actually getting to help. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Minnesota, there's a serious dearth of affordable housing uh, in Minnesota. It is a real tragedy, it's a real problem. Uh, and because of that, there are some fairly unscrupulous practices. And so being able to just help people with that kind of thing, being able to actually stand up and do a little bit of good in the world uh, while still having it count towards my education and learning how to be a lawyer, that was something that even today I, uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, and actually one of my uh, housing clinic alums uh, enjoyed it as well and went on to Stinson. So uh, uh, he, did, he did well out of it as well. Who was it, Doug? It's Kevin Kitchen. Oh, Kevin's <laughs> great. Um, oh, fun. And Doug, I would also say my clinic experience, um, it was my most meaningful work in law school. I was in the family law clinic and that confirmed that I wanted to be a litigator. 
Um, and I also, you know, got to go to court. My supervising attorney, Laura Thomas, who ran the clinic at the time and is now a judge, <laughs> um, was just absolutely amazing. Um, and I learned so much from her. Uh, similarly, I also did a clinic. Um, I did the employment law clinic and I, very similarly to Kate, I think it really showed me the impact that litigators can have on their clients. Um, part of the employment law clinic is helping clients go through the unemployment um, insurance process. Um, and I remember my last client, I was giving my concluding arguments to the administrative law judge and she started crying because it was sort of the moment where we could give her story in front of a judge and she felt really hurt. She didn't feel like anyone was hearing her story and we eventually won her case for her. And I think that was incredible. So very similarly, the clinic experience is fantastic if, uh, if you decide to uh, do that. Great, thank you for sharing those insights. We do have a question from Alex in the chat, um, wondering to, wanting to hear more about the process of applying for clerkships and how the Career Center uh, supports students in that, in that journey. So maybe Claudia, if you'd like to talk a little bit about our specific clerkship career counselor and how um, the Career Center can help with that. Absolutely, we're really proud of our clerkship numbers because um, I really do believe that anyone who is interested in, in clerking has that opportunity out of the, uh, out of the law school. Um, so clerkships um, are broken down into several different pathways. There's the federal clerkships, there's state clerkships, and among the state clerkships, there's a wide, um, um, there are different um, experiences. There's the state trial court level, there's the uh, court of appeals, and there's also Supreme Court. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep the conversation to, to our local clerkships, but our, our clerkship numbers really are national and we have students that, that clerk across the country and abroad as well. Um, so um, we have Allison Kennedy, who many of you will meet in our breakout room. Uh, she is terrific. And um, what I really like about the way that we work with students and clerkships is that we have a dedicated career counselor who is really immersed in clerkship trends, um, has developed relationships with judges, and judges actually pick up the phone and call her and say, you know, here's what, here's, I, I have an opening or, or here's what I'd like to find. So that's a, an amazing pipeline for our students. Um, so we have a process in place at the federal level you'd be working really closely with Allison Kennedy starting around your 2L year um, and there, there's a whole process in terms of working with faculty and recommendation letters so there's a lot behind the scenes it's um, some students start worrying about it right right from the bat it's not something to worry about it's something that um, will will develop in time yeah, um, that you'll get a lot of information about that um, towards the end of your 1L year into your 2L year, and then you'll start that process. And, and depending on the, on the court that you're interested in, there will be a slightly different process. All of that is managed really beautifully by Allison Kennedy. And of course, all the career counselors do work with students one-on-one -on -one to really kind of strategize about what they're thinking about um, post-grad. It's a wonderful way to start your career. Um, I think, Cindy, did I hear you mention you're going to a clerkship? Yes, I'm currently working um, at a trial court level uh, in Reno, Nevada, so second judicial district court. Do you want to talk a little bit about the experience of maybe securing that and if you work through the Career Center? Sure. Um, so sort of as I mentioned earlier, I didn't really know or think I was going into clerkships just because I really didn't know what it was coming into law school. But honestly, I think talking to people who have gone through clerkships or even talking to judges um, or talking to alum who have gone through the experience really helped me. And I was on journal and a lot of people said that that experience would help go into clerkship. And so I thought maybe using this experience would be really helpful in starting my career. And I really like working with facts. And I was told that the trial court level, you get to work with a lot of pleadings and briefs. And that's very, very true. I think I spend most days just parsing through facts and trying trying to figure out what's going on in the case, but that's something I really enjoy. And so I think that's why I was really interested in the district, the district trial um, 
core opportunity. Um, the experience was sort of interesting. I actually had graduated law school and moved to Reno without a job just because the pandemic was canceling job opportunities everywhere. And that was very disheartening. But as I mentioned earlier, the Career Center really, they fight for you when you don't feel like fighting for yourself. And that's really meaningful for me. Um, and that was really helpful just because I knew that there was a support system even as I moved away from Minnesota. Um, and so I think I found this opportunity off Simplicity, which is um, sort of a job posting board for law students. Um, and so I sent my resume and cover uh, letter to the Career Center and they just told me it's good, go for it. And they also uh, do job interview or mock interviews, which I think is extremely helpful just to help you get out the nerves and uh, appear more confident than you might feel in front of the interviewers. Um, and actually, this is crazy. My judge is a UMN law alumni. So she actually graduated from the University of Minnesota Law School, which is crazy. I did not think I would be meeting any other UMN law alums out here. But I think that also just speaks to the law school, right? Like, yeah, it's in Minnesota, but you can go anywhere you want to with the skills and the experiences that you get from the law school. Um, and she actually wants to encourage you all if you're interested in applying to clerkships out here after graduation to please apply. She loves you and law students and she wanted me to sort of pitch a little bit to you guys. <laughs> um, but she's amazing and truly you really develop sort of that detail orientation, just figuring out what's going on, where, um, and you really, really get to know civil procedure rules very well. Um, and I have a mentor out here. She was saying that sometimes, you know, you can you can trip up the opposing counsel with, the, with those just very detailed oriented rules. Um, so it's been a great experience, I guess, just echoing everyone. You know, you go into law school thinking you might do something. Maybe you don't know what you're doing, but just keep an open mind. Um, I never thought I'd move to Reno, Nevada. I never thought I'd be uh, clerking, but I think that's kind of the journey of law school and being a law student. And I, it's, it's a great ride. It's going to be hard, but it's great, especially at UMN Law. Cindy, you sent us up so perfectly to talk a little bit more about Max's question, which is, um, you know, support for folks that may want to work outside of the Twin Cities um, or aren't sure they want to stay in the Twin Cities. Personally, when I came to University of Minnesota Law, I knew I didn't want to stay in the Twin Cities, so I was very clear with my career counselor that I was targeting other markets. Um, and the three of you are such a cross section of the different markets, but maybe Claudia, do you want to speak a little bit to um, the support we have in other markets and then if the alums want to chip in on their their own experience with that as well. Sure, I'll keep my remarks brief because I'd, I'd love to hear from the panelists. Um, but certainly um, we work with each student um, based on their goals. So if a student comes in and says, my goal is to be in Alaska, I mean, that's what our goal will be. Um, and I feel really confident that based on our alumni base, based on the resources and tools we have, um, we can really strategize with that student. And, and it is an individual process, right? So uh, I would love to you know, take a student to Alaska myself and, and make it happen. But it, re um, it really is a partnership where we we would be kind of working together and saying, here are some ideas. Let's see, you know, what you feel comfortable doing right now. Is it, um, you know, reaching out to some alumni right now and doing some informational meetings? And if a student isn't there yet, well, we can do some practice interviews. And so it, it really is just a, a back and forth with that student to figure out kind of what strategy is going to best work with them and, and get them to, um, to achieve their goals. I don't think anything is impossible. I really don't. I, I think there you can take baby steps um, and, uh, um, you know, take it day by day and, and keep plugging away and, and, and getting that momentum toward, towards that final goal. But I have seen some really wonderful successes. And so I feel confident that our students can, can really land wherever they, whatever their end goal is. But I'd love to hear from the panelists and hear their individual stories of how they made those goals happen. Yeah, Doug, do you maybe want to talk, since you are um, international, do you want to talk a little bit about that, how that transpired for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and it's funny because I was actually thinking while we were talking about this, of all the people I know, I know classmates and friends of mine who are in DC, who are in New York, who are in Chicago, everyone in big law, kind of small firms. I've got friends out in Arizona and New Mexico doing public defender work and things like that. So I was actually just thinking how my classmates all over the world, and then I'm here in Germany, 
Um, and uh, and I was thinking about in the JAG Corps, actually, I, in the US Air Force JAG Corps alone, I know another four or five people who are all U of M Laura graduates. Uh, and they're in places like Hawaii, here in Germany, out on the West Coast, uh, just kind of the wets and breads. And actually somebody just uh, added me on LinkedIn, uh, some German national here, she's living in Frankfurt and she just graduated from the University of Minnesota as well. Um, I think they're doing the LLM. So it, it just seems that everywhere I look, you know, and the type of people as well who are coming out of Minnesota, not only are you all smart people, because let's face it, it's a great law school and it takes a lot of work to get into it, but then they're all really friendly as well. Uh, and I work with people across, uh, with the Air Force, I work with people who have people from Yale and Harvard, uh, right the way kind of through the spectrum in terms of all the rankings and things like that. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed most is the people I know from Minnesota uh, just have that kind of friendly collegial kind of experience and what have you, uh, no matter where they're working, no matter what they're doing. Uh, and a lot of it seems to be focused around that kind of giving back that public good. Uh, I don't know if it's just the type of people who apply to the Twin Cities and who are happy to brave the cold and the snow because it's there. I make most of it. I play pond hockey most weekends, um, but uh, it just seems to be something that the people in, uh, coming out of Minnesota are all pretty driven, but pretty happy to be friendly about it as well. So, yeah, I ended up in Germany. Uh, and as I, I think I cut out, but I mentioned I ended up in Gitmo down in uh, the Caribbean. Uh, working the 9-11 stuff uh, just all over the place that's just the nature of my job uh, but it seems to be something that's uh, doable uh, even even across the board. Great and Kate I was wondering if you could offer a little bit of, of insight for folks that st end up staying in the Twin Cities um, and what what that experience is like in the community of lawyers in the Twin Cities. Yeah I specifically wanted to stay in Minnesota um, and that can be a challenge when you decide that you want to clerk um, and that's, or you decide you want to pursue that as an option. Um, but I worked with Allison and I worked with Hallie to make sure that to the best of sort of our abilities, we would target my opportunities to the Twin Cities. Um, it's a great legal market. I, um, you know, I, work, I mean, none of us are working downtown right now, but when that is possible, my friend who is a public defender and my friend who's at a different firm, like we're going to be in spitting distance of each other um, and we'll be able to see each other and keep in touch that way. Um, I think you'll probably hear a number of times that it's a relatively small market. And I think that's true. You get to know people. I already feel like I've gotten to know some people. Um, and that's really nice. Um, it's nice to feel like you're a part of a specific community and that you're sort of accountable to each other that way. Um, and it's fun to be in touch with your law school friends still. Great, thank you so much. So we are actually going to transition into the breakout uh, portion of our, our day, but I just wanted to say thank you again to all the panelists for joining us. Um, and sharing your experiences. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, to speak with us. So yes, we've got some, some hands going. Um, I know, um, Doug, you will be sticking around for the breakout rooms, um, but Kate and Cindy, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with us. Um, and before we move into our breakout rooms, so like I mentioned, Doug will be staying and will be in a breakout room, as will Claudia, but we are also being joined by a few other folks that I want to give an opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, we have Allison Kennedy from the Career Center, who we've made reference to several times. Um, Allison, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, say a little bit about your area? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Allison Kennedy. I am a career counselor in the Career Center, and I also specialize in judicial clerkship processes. So what that means is if you're interested in a judicial clerkship, you would meet with me, whether I'm your counselor or not, and we talk about your long-term goals and how to reach those with different clerkship options. Um, so I do that. I also work on first-generation law student programs and mentorship programs. Um, so I do a lot of different things. I really love working with students and I'm really excited to be here today to be able to answer some questions. Excellent, thank you so much. And we have a, another career counselor, Holly Pre Prest, who uh, is, who's been mentioned as well and been shouted out several times for all the help that you've offered some of our alumni. Um, would you like to introduce yourself as well? 
Absolutely. So good to see you all. Thanks for being here. I'm Hallie Prest. I'm one of the career counselors. I'm also a grad of uh, the law school class of 2012, and I was a transfer student. So I also have experience at another law school for my first year. I went to Miami in Florida, um, but I absolutely love my work with students. I'm the type of person that jumps out of my seat with joy um, when my students master new skills and land jobs and I absolutely love the work that we do so I'm here to support my students from day one in their law school careers and all the way through um, and we I love to do um, programming and all of the other professional development types of activities that we help host uh, through the Career Center so thanks again for being here I look forward to chatting more in the breakout room. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we are also joined by one of our professors, Professor Lee. Uh, Professor, would you like to give a little bit of an introduction and talk about your area of expertise? Um, sure. Yes. I'm John Lee. Um, I teach torts. Um, so I will have about a quarter of you, hopefully, um, in the fall of next year. Um, most of my writing is in IP law, so trademark, copyright. I also served in the Army. Um, prior to tr transitioning to academia. So I'm, ha I'm happy to talk about that um, as well. Excellent, thank you so much. So um, what's gonna happen is you uh, admitted students will have the opportunity to join a breakout room. You should have um, a pop-up screen come up that says uh, the names of the folks in the room and you can opt in. If it doesn't pop up, you may need to go to the bottom of three dots. And if that doesn't work, you can hang out and I will make sure you get assigned to whatever room 